The GMC Hummer EV pickup trucks are officially rolling off assembly lines. This as General Motors pushes into the, uh, continues to push into the world of EVs. The auto giant uh, is looking to grab more market share in this ever-growing green vehicle jungle. If you're going to drive through a green jungle, maybe a Hummer is exactly the vehicle you want. Uh, the positive news, though, being a little over shallow, shallow today, as you can see, uh, by the departure of Dan Ammon from GM's autonomous driving arm, Cruise. That, as you can see, dropping the stock by around 5%. Joining us now to discuss all of this, Mark Royce, General Motors president, and my good friend and colleague, Bloomberg's David Weston. Mark, thank you very much indeed for your time today. We, we greatly appreciate it. Can I just park the Hummer for a moment? But I definitely want to come back to it. The, the stock is down today on Dan Ammon's departure. What message would you send to investors about the changes that are happening at Cruise and the impact that they're going to have? Well, good morning, Guy and David. I uh, appreciate you having me on, the, on the, the program here today. You know, as you saw in the company's statement, um, Dan Ammon has left Cruise. And we believe Cruz is in great hands with uh, Kyle Vaught, who's Cruz's co-founder, president, and CTO, and he's taking on the role of interim C CEO. Um, what I really want you know the investor community to know is that Cruz and GM are totally aligned on accelerating the joint autonomous vehicle strategy we outlined on our last investor day, which you would have seen. And, you know, we are leaders in the AV technology and have a lot of growth opportunities ahead, and we intend to lead. So we are deeply committed. Uh, we've got a great team there. We've got great people um, all across the enterprise working very hard um, to integrate and, and accelerate crews. So I would leave it there. And, uh, you know, we are, we are all, all in. So, Mark, I know you don't want to address the question of why Dan Ammon left, but address a different question, perhaps, if you would, and that is the timing of when we're first going to see commercial application of a cruise vehicle, because there had been predictions we'd be seeing it pretty soon, particularly in San Francisco. Are those going to be delayed? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, that's a great question, David, and, and I do want to make sure that everybody understands that, you know, we are accelerating um, our effort here. We are on track plus. Um, with the deployment on a commercial basis. In fact, um, you know, uh, we are right on the doorstep, as you mentioned, of the okay uh, to from our regulators to be able to uh, uh, charge and have driverless uh, vehicles for our customers. And we're doing some of those rides right now, as you might have seen, um, with our employees and, um, and, and finalizing uh, the touches on that. But there is absolutely no delay or, or hesitation. It's full on, let's go, um, and, and we're, 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 all, we're all in. So let's go back to the Hummer, if we could, that uh, Guy parked just a moment ago or so. Uh, the Hummer it looked like a beautiful vehicle. I've seen the prototype. Uh, it's rather expensive. It's high-end. And General Motors, led by you and Mary Barr, have really gone high-end with that. And then the Lyric coming out, I believe, sort of toward the beginning of the second quarter. Tell us about that strategy. What about the mass market? Because one of your opponents, starting with an F, seems to be going the other way. <laughs> well, I mean, um, we're talking about things like months here, uh, not not years. Um, and so, you know, one of our competitors um, and some of our competitors do not have dedicated platforms. We made these decisions to go all in three years ago, um, you know, irregardless of, of, of what was happening either politically or uh, in, in the great, greater environment because of the focus on uh, zero emissions and, and, and the planet, frankly. And so that end game, uh, you know, we, we have the high-end Hummer you know, the first editions of those are right around, uh, you know, $110,000. It starts, though, the vehicle starts at $79,000. And then um, the Lyric uh, starts at $59,000. And we're going to show the new Silverado EV at CES, which will be um, a pickup truck with a lot of innovative features. It's world class. We showed a teaser of the GMC Sierra EV on the last day or two, which will be the next truck. And, you know, after that, we're going to have some surprise showings of the Equinox at $30,000 right in the heart of the market, which is the, one of the biggest segments in the world. So, you know, the, the, the pipeline is absolutely full. Um, we are getting now up and running with Ultium uh, and that platform. And so it's, it's huge volume and scale. And that's, um, that's the strategy we have. So it's months, not, not weeks, years. 
uh, of difference. It's uh, it's a pipeline of execution. And so we're so excited yep. today uh, to be shipping the first LTM platform vehicles out of factory zero. And that's uh, that's a pretty good feeling. And then Bright Drop. Bright Drop, we have the first, um, you know, five units of our uh, EV600, which is, you know, off of the LTM platform, but for a commercial vehicle. And that, that vehicle was the fastest vehicle done in General Motors history at 20 months. And, you know, there's the couriers at FedEx are actually sort of uh, duking it out a little bit on, to see who can, who can drive those first because they're so excited. And the vehicle is really designed from the ground up with all of their requirements in mind. So it's, it's a big deal. Yeah, it certainly is, and, and it's going to be interesting to see those on the streets. Mark, the F-150 is going to have a head start, as you say, uh, over the Silverado. What is it about the Silverado that you're so confident will allow you to catch up with the F-150? Well, again, these are months here, not, not years. And, and so the cadence that we have, we're first. OK, let's just be clear about that. We're first uh, with LTM today um, with our um, Bright Drop van and, and, and Hummer. Um, if you want to look at the competition, then you have to look at our cadence of what we're doing out of factory zero. But I am so confident when you see the design, number one, the design. The design is 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 like any other, unlike any other pickup truck I've ever seen because it is a ground up dedicated platform. There's things like a see-through roof, there's four wheel steering, um, there's a whole bunch of other things that we're gonna announce when we do it. Um, and then we're going to show variants that, um, frankly, uh, no one else has. So you're going to see a whole um, arsenal of Silverados and Sierras. And so it won't be just one truck. It'll be um, a whole portfolio. So that's very exciting for us. So I'm very, very happy and excited and confident. So, so Mark, we're all looking forward to that Silverado at CES. At the same time, I want to come back to something you mentioned, the Equinox, and uh, not just the Sierra, but the Equinox. Maybe yep. something in the 30,000 range. You say you're going to give us a tease on that. When would that be available, do you believe, to be on the street? We know with the Silverado, we're looking at 2023, I believe. Right. It is. Um, I, I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't ruin this for our team because uh, I'm getting a lot of trouble. But um, it, it's 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 closer than what you think. Okay. And uh, again, um, these are these are uh, sort of the launch and activations of Ultium globally, but also um, in, in the United States market, obviously, but also in high volume with uh, Equinox and, and things like Blazers. So you'll see those. Um, keep your eyes focused on CES, and, and you might learn a little bit more about that, David. Uh, let's hope CES goes ahead, because obviously a lot of events at the moment getting cancelled. Uh, we're dealing with Delta, where you are. Omicron is coming. We're still trying to factor in what's happening with the chip story. Mark, can you give us a sit rep on what is happening inside the plants right now? Where are the bottlenecks? Where are the struggles? Where are you fixing things? What has still got to be fixed? Well, you know, I'll give you an example, Guy. You know, um, you, you mentioned a few of the challenges we have. But we also have a Corvette plant in Kentucky, and as we all know, the tragedies that happened um, throughout, uh, you know, the storms that that hit uh, tornado-wise. You know, some of these plants were in some of those places, and you know, we've got great people and we've got great employees that are, you know, um, fixing those challenges as well as the communities around them. So we've deployed, you know, quite a few people there to help and help the people in those communities. So. You know, um, th that's one set of challenges. The other set of challenges, I would say, is keeping the protocol in place that we had during, you know, the heart of the pan pandemic when we kind of wrote the book on uh, when we switched to ventilator making and, and, and PPE making. Uh, a lot of those plants were switched to that. That protocol that we wrote the book on for, um, you know, how people work safely in our plants is still in place. And so, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, we have all that in place, but people have done such a good job. I can really say that, you know, things happening inside our plants around the pandemic are few and far between because of the, the diligence of our employees and um, our, our protocol. So it, it's it's uh, not a bad story, but it's a lot. Of, it's very challenging for everybody. Mark, we can't let you go without talking about microchips. It's just the story for the auto industry. Sure. Two questions. One is, when are you going to be past the worst for GM? And second, in the long term, will we ever get to a world where we make enough in the United States of America to supply what you need? That's a great question, David. On the chip piece of this, you may have seen we have um, moved to uh, partner with probably eight of our suppliers, key suppliers on chips, 
And in that effort, um, we are consolidating the amount of chip families to three. And so our future car designs will, um, will, will really have three families of those chips that can be spread across lots of our supply base in high volume. That's very key for us. And on bringing that into the United States, I mean, we have to have a more diversified supply chain of chips. And so I think you're seeing um, big initiatives around that, both on a federal government uh, basis, yep. and that's been talked about, but also inside the industry where we have to, to really look at what um, each other's doing and get that here and get it as close to, to, to where we make things as we can. So I think there's a lot of that going on. So I, I think that's a good thing.